Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Now, today I'm going to be looking at a band called Drift Into Black. Um, now, yesterday this band contacted me and asked me to do a review of their upcoming album, um, Anthems From The Darkest Winter, which is due out on November 15th, I believe. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, they asked me to do a review of the album, which I have done. I've written up a um, review of the album on my Facebook page, if you want to have a look at that. Um, so obviously I have heard the track I'm going to be reacting to today before, um, but I just thought I would share it with all of you, um, as it's, it's the only single they've released off the upcoming album so far. Um, so I thought we'd give it a look. Now, obviously I've never heard of Drift Into Black before, so um, I had to get a bit of information, but there, there's not really very much information to give. Uh, now. Drift Into Black is a death slash doom solo project coming out of Sayreville, New Jersey, I hope I pronounced that right, and is the brainchild of a multi-talented musician, Craig Rossi. Um, he has released one album before, and obviously with the second album coming up, so I wanted to um, get some coverage of it. Now the album does feature two guest musicians, we've got Paul LaPlaca on bass, and Clemen Marque, I hope I pronounced that right, probably haven't, um, who is on drums. Um, as I said, I have, I've heard this before, and it's quite an interesting album, it's quite an interesting track, it's a little bit unusual, um, but I thought I would share it with you. Now the track we're going to be looking at is called The Darkest Winter, which is the title track from the album Anthems from The Darkest Winter. So, um, yes. We'll see, well, I know how it goes, but, you know, I'll look at the video and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So let's jump straight into it. Darkest Winter by Drifting to Black. Three.
And there we go. That was The Darkest Winter by Drift Into Black. Now, I found this quite interesting and it was and a little bit unusual because they come across as a death doom band, but I'm not necessarily sure that that's an accurate description and I'll explain why later. Um, now, the song itself just seems to simply be talking about someone dying out in the cold uh, winter of light on a mountain or something like that. And the lyrics go, Piece by piece you fade away until you're gone. With open eyes and an open mind is all it takes. You can't hide all your hate and misery. Silence speaks, you slowly burn until you break. Suffering in pain, judgment day is here now. The absent noise has you weeping to the heavens. Your screams from the snow-capped mountains are anthems from the darkest winter. Themes are dead, you have lost, slain for good, left to die. Snow turns red until you die, you turn to ice. Scavengers overhead saw the sky, piece by piece you're picked apart. There's nothing left, out of sight and out of mind, gone forever. And then it repeats that, excuse me, suffering in pain, judgment day is here now until the song fades out. So it's literally talking about someone dying out in the cold of winter and all by themselves. I mean, there's that line there, your screams from the snow-capped mountains are anthems from, for, from the darkest winter. So it's like nobody can hear your screams, you know, they're just echoing around the mountains and forests and stuff like that. You're out there all by yourself, dying, bleeding to death, as it says in the later things. Now, musically, this is fantastic. You know, obviously, he's a very talented musician himself. Um, he He's written all of these songs himself, you know, the music and the lyrics. And, you know, they're very brilliantly performed by the uh, two guest musicians and by himself. Um, and throughout the track, obviously, there's these strong, you know, death growl vocals, which are brilliantly performed as well. And then you've got that those clean uh, uh, vocals, which... Um, I actually likened to a sort of mix between Ghost and Mortis, with maybe a little bit of Ozzy Osbourne thrown in. Um, and, you know, it still sounds good, but it's very... It's, it's a very strange combination. And... Though this track and the opening track are mostly death growled vocals, the rest of the album is mostly the clean vocal style. And, I mean, from... Track six onwards, there is almost, almost no death growls at all in the rest of the album. I mean, it's a ten-track album, so from track six onwards, it's mostly clean vocals um, with a very few death growls. Whereas the earlier part of the album is there's, there's a fair amount of death growls, but again, the cleaner vocal style dominates slightly. Um, and, you know, I actually, I actually did like the album. I like this track as well. I think they're, you know, they're brilliantly performed. Um, but I'm not sure about the genre of the music. I'm not sure death slash doom is really accurate. I mean, the the subject matter of the lyrics does sort of fall in with the doom metal sort of thing. You know, it's sort of um, depressive and bleak sort of um, themes. And obviously, musically, there is elements of death metal, uh, I'd, I'd say more melodic death metal than just straight up death metal, and obviously the death growled vocals do fit into that, but the cleaner vocals, I'm not even sure where I'd put those, but it's not, it's not what I'd classify as either doom or death, but you know, still, still very well performed. Um, so... You know, this was a very sort of strange album for me. I mean, I did enjoy it, and I'd listened to it um, a couple of times. And I will say there is a there is actually a hidden gem on the album. The final track of the album is actually a cover of Pink Floyd's High Hopes, which um, I can't remember which album that one comes off of. But it was one of their much later albums. And it's a very, very good um, and well-performed track. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually performed with respect. Uh, to the um, original version, although he's obviously put his own unique style to it, so it's a considerably heavier track than the original Pink Floyd. Um, but 
he's he's done it in such a way that the emotional weight from the original still carries through to his his version and you know so it it's actually a very very good version of that track in my personal opinion i'm a huge fan of pink floyd i absolutely love them so you know i was, I was very curious when i saw that that was the final track on the album and um it turns out to actually be a pretty good track so um yeah um it's definitely something that i think is worth checking out but you shouldn't go into it expecting like pure doom death metal it's it's a bit it's a bit more laid back than that it's a bit more mellow you know obviously with the uh, clean vocals sort of really dominating the album um you know it's you, you shouldn't go into it expecting doom death you know heavy harsh uh, vocals i mean musically it is pretty heavy um but vocally it's not quite what you would expect but it's still a very interesting and pretty decent album so it's worth checking out and if, if you want to find out more about it i'll put some links to like the band camp and uh, facebook page for the band below uh, where you can also pre-order uh, the album should you be interested um but yeah it, that that was a unusual one for me it's not at all what i was expecting when i put that on you know with it opening with the harsh heavy track i was like oh, this is gonna be great and then immediately now after the first track i think it's called snowblind now snowbound you know the first track you know harsh heavy it was like doom death exactly what you'd expect but then it came in with the second track no tomorrow and that clean vocal style came in and i think was the entire track i can't remember if there's any actual doom growls uh death growls in that track at all you know i was, I was sort of like wait what you know what was just happened here but like i said it was a good and interesting album so you know it's definitely worth checking out um but i can't think really much else to say about that um so i will leave that as it is now, if anybody wants to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so. By all means, you can drop a comment in the comment section below, or message me on my Facebook or my Instagram, or you can even message me through my Patreon, where you could also help to support this channel and help me create future content, maybe improve the quality of uh, future content, you know, maybe this nasty green thing hanging up here. Um, but do know if you do make a suggestion, it might take me a while to get around to it, because I do get suggested so many tracks every single day. You know, my list grows faster than I can record the videos, but I do write down every suggestion I get. So it, it will get done eventually. It's just going to take me a while to get to it. Also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, a British-based charity whose main goal is to put an end to hate crimes, mainly those involving people of the alternative culture, people who listen to alternative music and wear alternative fashion. Uh, obviously, they want to put an end to all hate crimes, but their main focus is the um, alternative culture because of... Well, because that's what sparked them into doing this in the first place. And it's something that I very strongly believe in. It's something I think really needs more attention bringing to it. It's something I think needs to be spoken about a lot more than it does. Because every single day all over the world, people are getting violently attacked and viciously brutalised just because of the music that they listen to or the clothes that they wear because they stand out from the crowd, because they're different and don't fall into societal norms, as it were. And it never gets talked about, it never gets spoken about unless a tragedy happens. You know, several people have been brutally assaulted, brutally attacked. People have, several people have been killed because of their taste in because, you know, they listen to alternative music. But that is the only time it ever gets spoken about. Like, the incident with Sophie Lancaster, this happened several years ago now. I think about nine years ago, maybe ten years ago. I can't remember exactly. You know, this girl and her boyfriend were walking home, minding their own business, and they were jumped by a group of people, a group of five or six people. And they were brutally beaten and kicked so severely that they both went into a coma. Now... Her boyfriend, Rob Maltby, he thankfully survived. He came out of his coma after um, several days. I think it was around about a week. I can't remember exactly. But Sophie Lancaster was in a coma for 13 days before she died because the injuries were so severe. You know, they, they stamped on her head. You know, they brutally kicked and beat this girl 
just because of her taste in music. And, you know, it shouldn't take a tragedy for these sort of things to get spoken about. Because people are getting severely hurt. And it needs to stop. And this is what the Sophie Lancaster Foundation is all about. They want to put an end to this. They want people to know that there are consequences to their actions. They want people to be aware that this is happening. And, you know, put an end to it. You know, because I can guarantee since Sophie Lancaster was so callously murdered just for her taste of music, I can guarantee several thousand other people who listen to alternative music have been violently attacked, beaten, you know, kicked, punched, you know, assaulted in numerous different ways. I can guarantee that that's happened, but it's never getting spoken about. And, you know, we need to bring more attention to it, you know. People have got to know that there are consequences for their actions when they do things like this. Because it's unacceptable. You know, that there's no point to doing it. It's not going to achieve anything. So why bother? You know, you, you risk sending yourself to jail just because you don't like the clothes that someone is wearing or the music they're listening to. If you don't like the music, don't listen to it. If you don't like the clothes they're wearing, don't look at them. It's really, really simple. You know, but there's no need to violently attack someone just because they are different to you and because they have a different opinion to you. you know, and the Sophie Lancaster want, Foundation wants to stop this. You know, they want to stop that sort of thing from happening. They don't want to see another family go through what they went through. You know, nobody should die for their taste in music. If you'd like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. You can go over there, find out uh, what they're working on at the moment, and find out what their goal is, because they can explain it uh, considerably better than I can. And if you can help them in any way, even like a small donation through their website, or even something like one of these Sophie wristbands off their web store, you know, if you can, if you can help them in any small way, it's greatly appreciated, because the smallest amount can make the biggest difference, and the sooner we bring more attention to this, the sooner we can help to stamp out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. But, I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.